great head of our life as we look to Jesus right now, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. We just want to magnify the Lord tonight and make his name big in the earth because he's a good God. Amen. Yeah. I'm reminded tonight that when praises go up, that the blessings of the Lord are coming down. Amen. Amen. And because we serve a true and living God, a God that is worthy of all of our praise, I can't help but to thank him on tonight. I want to bless him tonight, amen, and just continue to call upon his name because the Bible says at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father, amen. And so when Zerubbabel began to speak, he said it was not by might, it was not by power, but it's by his spirit. How many of y'all know the spirit of the Lord is in the house on tonight? And we come to celebrate him, amen. We come to give honor and praise to honor is due, amen. And that's to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It never seems to amaze me, amen, the assignment that Jesus had, amen, because many times he was rejected by his own people. He said he came to his own and they received him not, he said, but to as many as received me, to them gave me the power to become the sons of God. Are you a son of God tonight? Can you trust the Lord in everything that you need for tonight, amen? God is good, amen. And I just thank you for the very air that we breathe, amen. I just thank you for circulating the air, you know. That we can breathe, amen. But tonight is in him we live, we move, and we have our being, amen. And so because the just shall live by his faith, amen. I just want to give him praise. If y'all can just stand with me for just for a brief minute, amen. And, and let's just acknowledge the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let's, let's just reverence him tonight. Let's just give him a wave offering, amen. Because our God, he's worthy, amen. And there is no God like our God, Jehovah, amen. And so as we continue to just reverence him and continue to just give him praise as we can lift our hands in the sanctuary, amen, we just want to bless him in the earth, amen, because he's the all-knowing, all-powerful God, and, and it's in him we live, we move, and we have our being. So as we just welcome the presence of the Lord in the room on tonight, amen, we give glory and honor, amen, we bow to his majesty on tonight, amen, because he is the king of kings and he is the Lord of lords, amen. And I just want to thank him right now for just keeping us, just thank him for covering us, amen. Thank him for meeting every need in our life, amen. And so as we begin to celebrate him, he'll begin to celebrate us. Thank him for keeping our children and watching over them, amen. Thank him that we in our right mind on tonight, amen, that we can crowd our Father, amen, to such a holy God, amen, because he's good and his mercy endure forever, amen. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, as we look to you right now, as we come, Lord God, just lifting our hands before your presence, oh God, thanking you for being a right now, God, right now. Father, you know our needs, Lord God, you know everything that concerns us, oh God, and Father, you promised that you would perfect those things that concern us, Lord God. So Father, as we empty ourselves tonight before your presence, Lord, we ask that you will refill us, Lord God. Father, let your fire fall fresh in this place. Let the Holy Spirit move like you've never moved before. And, Lord, we will honor you. We will give you praise, Lord God. We will not cease to make mention of your name, Lord God, knowing that you is a good God, Lord God. And for cause, we bow our knees unto the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, of whom the whole heaven and earth is named, that you may grant us according to your riches to be strengthened by your might, by your spirit, and the inner man, that Christ may dwell in our hearts by faith, that ye be rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend all saints, what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height, and to know the love of God will pass us all knowledge. Now unto him that is able to keep us, we just want to say we thank you right now, Lord God. And Father, we present our bodies before you tonight as a living sacrifice. As you to continue watch over us. And it's in the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. amen. And amen. amen. I was just so excited. Amen. Just laying before the Lord, letting the Holy Spirit just minister to me. Amen. And David began to talk in that old Psalms 119. He said, well, with shall a young man cleanse his ways by taking heed thereto according to thy word. He said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. There's a good place for the word to reside tonight, amen, in our heart, amen. And as we get focused tonight, as we continue to look to him, amen, I just encourage every heart to look up, amen, because your salvation draweth nigh tonight, amen. So if you come expecting something, you're in the right place, amen, at the right time, amen, to receive a right now miracle, amen. All the promises of God is yea, and the Bible declaring in him 
It is amen, amen. So as we lay a foundation tonight, as we get ready to get into the word of truth on tonight, amen, we just want to thank him for another opportunity, amen, because he's good, amen. If you have your Bibles, could you briefly turn with me to Jeremiah, the 30th chapter, and we're going to look at verse 17. I just want to quote a scripture from the weeping prophet on tonight, amen. God is an awesome God, and he can do anything but fail on tonight, amen. But I want to bless him in the earth today. And I will not stop ceasing to call upon his name, amen. Because the Bible declared that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous run in. And we are safe, amen. How many of y'all know there's safety in the arms of Jesus tonight? There is divine protection, amen. And so while I was talking to the Lord tonight, and he put this spirit, he put this word in my spirit, restoration, amen. And as I begin to look at the word restoration, the first word appeared in there was abundance, Amen. How many of y'all need abundant blessings tonight? How many of y'all need the rain to just pour on y'all tonight, amen? Come on, y'all. We got to talk back to such a holy God, amen, because God is good. And I want to declare tonight his favor is upon us, amen. And we are not just walking in help, but we are walking in divine favor on tonight, amen, because God is good. And as the weeping prophet begin to speak over there in Jeremiah, the 30th chapter, in the 17th verse, this is what it says. For I will restore health unto thee. Come on. If you need a healing in your body, God said, I am Jehovah Rapha. I am the God that will heal you. Amen. He said, for I will restore health unto thee and I will heal thee of thy wounds, said the Lord, because they called thee an outcast, saying, this is Zion, who no man seeketh after. Verse 18 said, thus said the Lord, behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tent and have mercy on his dwelling place. And the city shall be, shall be built upon her own heap, and the palace shall remain after the manner thereof. How many of y'all know God want to restore the house today? God want to give us an abundance, amen. Everything that we lost, God said he want to put it back, amen. God said, but I want to do it ten times more than what I did the last time, amen. He said, because I am that kind of God. Joel 2, amen. Let's go there, 25 and 26. We're laying a foundation, amen, because God is a good God. Can y'all testify of his goodness on tonight? Oh, yeah. Haven't he kept us, amen? Haven't he watched over us? Haven't he caused us to walk in blessings after blessings on tonight, amen? But that's just like God, amen? Yeah. And the Bible says, them that wait. Are you waiting on the promises of God? Are you trusting in the holy God tonight? Because God is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endure through all generations. Joel 2. 25 and 26. Come on, we're talking about restoration tonight. God want to bring our stuff back to us. He said everything that the enemy stole, he got to walk it back to us seven times more. Amen. I'm waiting on my return right now. I'm waiting on the blessings right now to come back into fruition. Amen. Because he's a good God. Amen. He said a righteous man can decree a thing and it shall be established. Amen. He want to establish us tonight. Amen. He want to cover us and keep us and empower us. Amen. And cause us to walk in this supernatural realm. Amen. Because he's a good God, amen. He's just like God, amen. He can do anything he desires to do, amen. So if you wait on him, say he'll show up. I have the confidence he'll show up, amen. Joel 2 and 25, and it reads, And I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten. So whatever was lost, God said he's going to restore back the years, amen. Now, I'm not just talking about one day or two days, amen. He said he's going to restore back the years, that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm. He said, look, my great army which I which I sent among you, and ye shall eat plenty. Pastor, why you keep going back there? Because I want you to get this in your spirit. Come on, y'all. So we serve a God of much more than enough. Come on, they're going to be outpouring and God said we won't even have room enough to receive, amen. Come on, these are the kind of blessings that we're getting ready to walk in. Amen. In this seven month, we believe in heaven to open up and we're looking for an outpouring to just pour and never turn off. Amen. Because God is good and you shall eat plenty. That means there's not going to be no lack. Amen. You will be able to eat all that you desire to eat and then some. Amen. Because God is good. Psalms 51 and 12. I hope y'all writing these scriptures down. The first one was Jeremiah 30 and 17. The second was Joel 2, 25 and 26. Now we're going to Psalms 51 and 12. 
He's a God that will restore tonight. Amen. I'm so grateful because I was thinking about the life and the ministry of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And even though he faced many attacks, amen, he understood what his purpose was, amen. When you know what God has for you to do, amen, you shouldn't let no demon, no devil in hell persuade you to walk away from what God has caused you to walk into, amen. Come on, it's time to make sacrifices, but it's time to make sacrifices for the King of kings and for the Lord of lords, amen. As he begin to restore this house, as the Lord begin to give increase in this house, miracles and signs and wonders are before us on tonight, amen. But we got to trust God right now. And y'all, when I be praying and interceding, the Lord begin to show me our children. The Lord shows this age of protection that he have around them. He said, Pastor, tell them I'm going to keep them. Pastor, tell them I'm going to raise them up in this season. Pastor, tell them I'm not going to let nothing come nigh their dwelling, Lord God. And he said, Father God, when you call on me, I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. He said, because I am the great I am. Amen. How many of y'all know we serve an awesome God on tonight? Come on, he can do anything but fail, amen. He said he's going to give us with the adventures, amen. In other words, he said, I'll create something for you tonight. If you have the faith and the power to trust in me, God said, I'll make it well with you on tonight, amen. And so here David, in the midst of all of his misfortune, amen, when he got out of the will of God, amen, God still turned around and blessed him, amen. And he didn't hold his sins against him. How many of you know God won't judge us according to our sins on tonight? But he's a faithful judge of the earth, amen. He's an awesome God. He's a miracle-working God. Amen. So here we see over in Psalms 51 and 12. Amen. And it reads, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Come on. David was in a place, y'all, where he thought he had lost his salvation. He had lost his place with God because he allowed sin and iniquity to get in his heart. Amen. Come on, y'all. We got to cut sin off. Amen. Because it's detrimental to what God want to do through us. Amen. But if we walk in the liberty where he has made us free, say, I'm free tonight. See, ain't no change holding us, amen. But we can walk in the blessings and the power and the favor of God on tonight. Stop looking at where you come from, but look where you're going tonight. Come on. We looking up. We no longer walking with our head down. We walking with our head up, amen, because we serve a God that will quicken us, amen. And that word quicken means to make us alive, amen. But here we see David asking God, look, Lord, restore the joy of my salvation. He didn't just ask him for his salvation back. He said, give me some joy with it. Let me have some joy with it. Amen. And I say, God, what are you saying on tonight? Amen. He's awesome on tonight. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then I will teach transgression. Come on, we have an assignment, y'all, God. The Bible said that we are written epistles read right amongst men. Come on, we are letters. Somebody reading our life. Somebody looking at you tonight because you made a decision to serve Jesus. They want to see if you're with this for real tonight. Oh, uh, you're labeling vain on tonight. Come on, y'all. I thank you for the glory that's being revealed in us right now. And because God want to restore he want to put back, amen. I want to read a little backwards on you. I want you to go to that 10th verse right now. Because God said, I'll do it. If you ask me, God said, ask me for what you will. And he said, I'll give it to you. But you got to trust me on this matter, amen. He said, because I'm a good God. And he said, have none of y'all suffered the temptation that I suffered? He said, I'm going to show y'all that briefly, just for a second. But we're not going to stay there. But we're going to get into our lesson tonight. But when we leave from here, I want to show y'all. That Jesus was just like we are in the earth, amen. The Bible says he became flesh and he did what? He dwelled, that word dwell means he came to live among us, amen. And he said we beheld his glory, in other words, we saw him as the only begotten of the Father, the full of grace, which is divine favor for us, full of grace and truth. And so I thank the Lord for his unmerited favor on tonight, that we can walk in the favor and in the power of God. But that 10 verse, he created me, come on, you want God to do it? Well, surrender. Come on, y'all. You got to surrender. You want God to do it? Come on. We've been fighting this battle on our own for too long, y'all. And every time we come to a standstill. But if you will release it and turn it over to God, God said, I'll create with you what I need to create in you tonight. And I'll cause you to stand. And having done all the stand, have your lines girded about with the truth. He said, I'll prepare you for what you're getting ready to face. And God said, I brought y'all out. And so I'm not going to let the enemy tarnish your life off. You're back no longer. You say it's blessing time. You say, create in me a clean heart. Come on. 
That's your spirit tonight. Your heart is your spirit because that's what God is looking at tonight. What's in the contents of your heart? God said, look, y'all honor me with y'all lips. Y'all saying all kind of stuff for me. But when I look at your heart, it is far from me. He said, but if you draw nigh to me, come on. You want to get this thing right? Come on. Be willing to walk away. I said, Lord, I'm willing to walk away. I surrender all. He said, create in me a clean heart and renew. God said, I'll do it over for you. Renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away. Come on, y'all. We're not cast away. Come on, David began to pray this prayer because David was in a situation, in a place where God, he could have lost everything. Why, Pastor? Because of a decision he made. When he decided to take Uriah and put him on the front line and cost him his life, he didn't know his life was just in much jeopardy. But I'm telling you, we got to walk away from sin tonight. And if God can forgive David, come on now. Y'all know some of the things that happen to stuff David did. But if God can forgive David, what about us tonight? David just didn't take the man's wife. He pregnant his wife. But because God would not let him walk into condemnation, God told him, he said, that baby y'all have, it ain't going to live. And so David thought he was smarter than God. Come on, stop thinking you know more than God. You don't know more than the Holy Spirit. Smart as Einstein was, he was not smarter than the Holy Ghost. Amen? Because there's nobody like God. And David thought he was smarter than God. I ain't going to eat nothing. He went on a fast trying to get that baby to live. But when God say something, how many of y'all know it's final? He said he won't alter the words that come out of his mouth. Amen. God said, if I say this, shall not I do it? If I spoke it, shall not I make it good? We serve a good God tonight. But if you can just trust him. And so I was showing y'all because a lot of people don't understand. Study the book. See, when you study the book, you will understand the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. He didn't just come and everything was good. He suffered many afflictions while he was on the earth in his fleshly body. And he suffered temptation like none of us suffer. But the only differential with Jesus was he knew the word. Come on, see, when you know the word, that's your defense against the enemy. You got to keep a word in your mouth, amen. So Matthew, the third chapter and 11 verse, I'm not going to stay there because I'm trying to get to Titus tonight, amen. Because the God we serve, he's worthy to be praised on tonight. And come on, it's time to celebrate the Lord. Stop letting stuff get in your ears. Stop looking at stuff and getting down and having these oppressive, depressed spirits. Come on. It's time out for that. Amen. I'm going to live and I'm going to not die to declare the works of the Lord. I'm going to live in abundance. I'm going to enjoy life while God has given it to me. And what I ain't got, I ain't going to worry about. But what I need, he said that he will supply. Oh, y'all don't like that. He said, but what you need, I'll supply. And he said, if you act right, I even will give you some of the things you want. That's the kind of God we serve, amen. He's good. I feel excitement tonight, amen. I've been like this all day. Laying before the Lord. Blessings and miracles come when we begin to muse before the Lord. Well, let me make it more plain. We begin to meditate. That's when the glory shows up. See, when you start taking the word and storing it in your long-term memory, I'm not just talking about letting it come and the enemy steal it. But I'm talking about when you take that word and you hold on to it. And see, sometimes I get so caught up because when I was looking at David, and David said, Pastor, when I came to my house and everything was burned up, my wife and all my children and everything, everything I owned was gone. He said, Pastor, when my own people tried to come up against me to try to do me bodily harm, he said, Pastor, I had to look up. But the most devastating thing out of it all, Pastor, I had to encourage myself. Yeah. You ever told yourself sometime it's going to be all right when it look like all hell and broke loose, look like everything going wrong, and you ain't got nobody to talk to but you or y'all? Y'all ain't never been there before. Yeah. I was like David. I had to encourage my own self. Because yeah. God said, I'm going to keep them. And he said, just like I said it, you could take it to the bank. Yeah. Matthew 3. And he left him. Pastor, why are you going there? Because we have to see the account of Jesus' life. Yeah. While he was in the earth, in his fleshly body. He wasn't without attack. 
But look what David said in his scripture. He said, my own familiar friends, I'm talking about the ones that we love, the ones we trust, have lifted up their heels of goodness. Let me tell y'all tonight, your friend will turn on. Oh, Pastor, I don't have them kind of friends. We all got them. You might not act like you got them. We all got them. Here in Matthew 3 and 11, it reads, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that coming after me is mightier than I. John was given a count of what was to come. So because God is getting ready to restore the house, y'all, we're getting ready for what's getting ready to come. Come on, I'm finna make it all new in the house, amen. We're preparing ourselves for this outpouring of God's spirit like we have never witnessed it before. And so we tired of having church as usual. I want us to come in and we're going to shout, we're going to run, we're going to do whatever it takes, amen. Because God have kept us, God have blessed us, and he calls us to walk in faithful. So you might can sit down on God, but I can't sit down on God because when I think about what he's done and what he's continuing to do, oh, I got to give him praise. And I ain't about to apologize for me celebrating the Lord. I'm going to give him some praise. I'm going to shout everywhere I go, and I ain't going to keep my mouth closed, amen. Because when you're with your favorite people at your favorite dance, I bet you don't hold steel then. So why would you come to God's house? Well, he done kept us all through the week. All last night while we were sleeping, when we was in a coma, we didn't know what was going on. He had assigned some angels to watch over us last night. And early this morning, early this morning, some people still waiting to hear the bell and haven't heard it. But if you heard it, that's enough, right? That'll give him some praise. See, my first rule of thought when I wake up in the morning, whether I'm laying down or standing up, is to say, thank you, Lord. We can no longer take things for granted. Because God said, look, I'm redeeming the time for y'all. Because y'all know y'all living in some devastating times right now. You see, but I always told y'all, never forget, the government is on my shoulders. No matter what the natural man do. They all got to come to me. Yeah. And with all, only thing that matters is what I say. Yeah. Come on, I'm telling y'all. See, we got to have that kind of trust in God. Yeah. Because y'all know we face with some obscure time right now. Yeah. Everywhere we look, trouble is all around us. But God is a merciful God. Yeah. And I give him praise and thanks every day. Yeah. You see, but he that coming out to me is mighty. See, what are you saying this for? Because I want you to see this restoration taking place. See, John knew that he was on an assignment. But you have to understand John's assignment. John, John assignment was to preach repentance. But John knew there was something supernatural coming after him. John said, wait a minute, whose shoes I, I either worthy to unloose? He said, I baptize you with water unto repentance. But when he comes. How many of y'all know he's here right now? Y'all, how many of y'all know y'all don't have to wait on him no more? How many of y'all know the presence of the Lord is in the house right now? God said, I'm going to restore the years of canker worm, the caterpillar, everything you lost. God said, this is a time of refreshing right now. And I'm getting ready to release an, an earning on you all like y'all never seen before. The Bible, with well, the spirit of the Lord is, and he's in this house, y'all. Because he have given us the liberty. He have given us the freedom. The crowd of our father. John said, but there's one who's coming that is mighty. Whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Who fan is in his hand. And he will thoroughly purge his flow and gather his wheat into the garner. But he will burn up the shaft with unquenchable fire. All unrighteousness, y'all. Guess what God get ready to do? Burn it up. I ask the Lord to cleanse us. I asked him to wash us with this his soul, that we might be clean. And see, I've been praying and asking the Lord not just to make a decision, but to let us make the right decision. Why? Because we have the mind of Christ. Now, we don't think like we used to. Well, I hope we don't think like we used to. But I try to think and consider every action before it happens. And I give God praise. Pastor, what are you trying to, I'm trying to show you Jesus before his ministry even could start. He had an encounter. Help us tonight, Pastor. Well, that's what I'm finna do. Every time you get ready to do something before the Lord, the enemy gonna launch an attack against you. He gonna try to bring up an accusation against you. He gonna try to make people think that you ain't who you're supposed to be. But I'm not looking at a man. Because I'm looking at the 
Because Jesus said, just like he suffered, we're going to have to go through some things. We're going to have to go through some battles in this earth. But that's what I like to fault, you see. Be of good cheer. For I have overcome. I'm an overcomer tonight, amen. Y'all know we don't overcome some stuff, amen. When the enemy done play games with our mind, when we thought we were going to lose our mind and go crazy and all that different stuff, who kept them? Wasn't God? And guess what? He didn't have to do a whole lot of stuff to kept But guess what he did? He just said one word. Boy, y'all don't want this tonight. I could tell y'all don't want this tonight. He just said one word. One word will change our whole lifestyle and cause us to walk. In divine favor. Pastor, you see, we're going to Titus. I'm trying to get there. Verse 13 said, Then come Jesus from Galilee to the Jordan unto John to be baptized. What he was doing, he wanted to keep the law. And John already knew. But guess what? The scriptures had to be fulfilled. Jesus said, I don't want y'all to do nothing that I won't do. And he said, when you look at examples, you got to look up because I am the first examples. And Paul caught on after his transformation. Paul caught on. Paul said, I became all the old men that I might win some. Sometimes you might have to go a little deeper, y'all. Sometimes you might have to stay in the prayer room a little bit longer. See? But we got God on the timetable. I'm going to give him five minutes. And after five minutes, but what happens if the breakthrough don't come until the sixth minute? See, you can limit it. Go. When I go in, I ain't coming out till I get what I want. Yeah. See, so many times we go in and we settle. You, it ain't time to settle. It's time if you're going to go in, guess what? You ought to come out with what you want. Oh, yeah. Huh? You around there playing and you going in the store, you fidgeting around the store. You want steaks and the pork chops on sale. I won't get what I come to the store for. <laughs> See, a lot of times we let stuff change our mindset. But that ain't what I went there for. I'm going in there to get what I want. Now, I might not get these steaks the next day, but this night. Oh, we're going to have a good time. Because tomorrow, I might can't do the same thing, but while it is time, y'all can hear me. See, you got to praise him when you get the time. When God affords you the opportunity and the ability to give him praise, you ought to give God praise. Stop hurting yourself. We serve an unlimited God. And I preach this and teach it the same way. Why? Because faith is not foolishness. If you know you ain't able to go there, don't go there till you get evil. See, don't do stuff you know you ain't ready to do. Jesus didn't move before his time. Because if he had to move before this third chapter, he would have missed this season. And guess what, y'all? He was Jesus. What do you say? Then come in Jesus from John to John to be baptized of him. But John forbid him, saying, I had need to be baptized of thee. And coming down to me, listen how Jesus replied. Because Jesus knew that this was necessary. How many of y'all know it's necessary for us to be here tonight? Yeah. How many of you know it's a must that we be in the house and in the presence of God on tonight? Yeah. See, with John, when John recognized who it was, but y'all, I feel this Holy Ghost on me tonight, and I got this preaching spirit on me tonight, but I'm just telling you tonight, John recognized who he was. But when John fell under pressure, when hard times come, John got confused. Come on, don't let the devil confuse you tonight. That's how John got confused. John said, go ask him, is it he or shall I look for another one? See, he was in prison for what? Standing for him on the word of God. So when you have been tested and tried, you can remain. All you got to do is just hold out till your change come. That was a part of John's assignment. And so that's why God don't tell us up front what he want us to do. Because if he would tell some of us, we won't even do it. Because we don't know what's in the future will God have for us. But I'm willing. We read it last week. If you're willing and obedient. You can't just be willing without being obedient. Willing and obedient works together. Jesus answered and said unto him, suffer it to be so now. For thus it be behoove us, become us, to fulfill all righteousness. I got to put a peg right there. Because what God was doing with Jesus at that point, he was preparing him for what was to come. See, even though we where we at right now, if God would open up the supernatural realm, there's all kind of stuff around us. And God knows that Jesus had to be equipped to carry the assignment. And the only way that he could have fulfilled his task 
you needed the power of the Holy Ghost. That's the third person in the Trinity, y'all. So, pastors, help me tonight. If Jesus needed the Holy Ghost, why we don't need him? See, because he would have failed without the power in the presence of God in his life. We don't fail enough, y'all. I'm ready to go and claim my inheritance right now. Knowing I got a double blessing anyway, how I get a double blessing? I'm asked what God journey up to Christ Jesus. Not only do I get Jesus blessed, I get all of God blessed too. But we got to live holy. We can't live any kind of way and expect to receive the prize. But I'm there. And Jesus, when he was baptized, listen there. Say God is your. Sure. Hebrews 13 and 8 is a scripture that you can't never forget. Because it says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. This same Jesus right here. And this experience and this encounter that he's having right now with the Father. We can have those same encounters. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heaven was open unto him. God said, now I got to come. And I got to show up. Because he will be in my voice. Now, how many of y'all know Jesus was on command, under command when he was on the earth? Jesus said it many times. I didn't come to do my work. I come to do the work of the Father who had sent me. So that means he wasn't sitting on his own. So guess what we ought to be doing? The work of the Father right now. When people see us, they ought to not see the natural you. But they ought to see a reflection of Jesus Christ all over our life. Because a lot of times, people like to go in our archive. Pastor, help me there. They like to go in our past. So they remember where we come from. And they don't understand where we at right now. Because they remember how we used to be a wretch undone. How we'll tell a lie just for fun. But they don't know a change have taken place. And every time friends see me, had not seen me in a long time, they say, boy, it's something different about you. And so I let them try to figure it out. See, because all we got to do, y'all, be honest with yourself. All you got to do, you don't even have to draw attention to yourself. All you have to do is just live life. Don't talk about it. Just live it. See, because we mirrors, people looking at us. And you're trying to tell everybody, yeah, I'm holy. I'm feeling. Come on. Come on. You, ain't, you don't have to go that far. Because what's in you is going to come out. You ever thought you stopped cussing before? And when somebody says something wrong to you before, you know, you load out. But I thought it was gone. Well, that's why the Bible says it is it, it, what goes in a man don't defile him. See, this is that hidden stuff that just pops up all of a sudden. You ever was talking and just said a cuss word and then you were saying it in front of the wrong people? And you just felt so ashamed. They say, oh, Lord, I thought they was holy. I thought they were delivered. No. When you least suspect me. That's why church don't thought here. It starts at home. That's why you got to live holy before your children because if you don't, they're going to make you ashamed. You in the store and that child start cussing. You say, you don't do nothing. He don't do that. You lie. Because for number one, they had to hear it from somewhere. Come on, y'all. Don't take rocket scientists to figure this out. But Jesus said, when mommy went straight, in other words, the water couldn't even hold him. He had so much power. When John took him under the water, the water couldn't even contain him. The Bible said he came straight way up out of the water. And, the, and lo, the heavens were open unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, saying he would be filled with the Holy Ghost. But back in Old Testament times, just to bring clarity to the readers and to the study of tonight, y'all, back in Old Testament time, the Holy Ghost did not come to live in them at that time. It came upon them. So what we're seeing right now, he's being filled with the Holy Ghost, but it didn't go in him because that didn't happen to the New Testament church come. But Jesus had the dove laying up on his shoulder. And look what he said. I said, God, what are you saying? He said, I had to put that power on him. Because the next day, all hell was getting ready to break, break through in his life. And all of us done had them hell experience. One day, everything just as hunker during, just as good. And the next day, you'll think the bride or Dracula done showed up. I said, Lord, where did this come from? But he said, I have given you the power to resist. 
He said, but the first thing you have to remember to do is submit yourself unto the Lord. Resist the devil and he'll flee. You're standing there trying to fight a force that you have no power and authority over. If this demon can deceive a third of God, heaven, and angels, what are you sitting there playing with the devil for with these little thoughts in your mind? And that's how he's attacking us right now, through a thought. That man don't like you. You can't do nothing else the rest of the day because he planted that seed in you. Tell me all the time, Gerald don't like you. I say, I know she don't. I know that when I met her. Because what I was doing, I wasn't doing it for her to like me. I was doing it for her to fall mad in love with me. She don't like me. Come on, y'all better quit playing. Come on, y'all better quit playing. No, she don't like me. She don't. I do stuff that make her love me. See, 25 years later, I'm still bringing a flower. Y'all don't understand this. See, you can't cut off what you started. Come on, what it took to keep her, to get her? I'm using the I ain't using nothing new. Telling the same thing. And I have to repent in the morning time. When she wake up in the morning, I have to repent. I say, Lord, no, I didn't mean to say that. What, what happened? I said, girl, you look so good. It's 5 o'clock in the morning. Now, you know that girl. I just thought I'd throw that in there for free. Not at 5 in the morning, pal. I said, girl, you look so good. She said, boy, you ought to stop. Well, I ain't put my glasses on yet. Let me look. That's how good God is. And look, the spirit of God descended like a dove and lighted upon him. And when God do stuff, he confirm it, y'all. By the word. He's still doing that today. God said, I promise to bless y'all. I can't reverse it. I just want y'all to walk in it. See, the Bible said, be confident this of this one thing. He which begun a good work and you will perform it until the jail of Jesus Christ. You're looking for this Philippians 1 and 6. See, God said, what I started in you, I'm going to bring it into fruition. He said, look, when a barge from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am. This is the testimony that we want, y'all, for God to do what? For him to be pleased with our life. And all the way God can be pleased with our life is that we have to walk upright before him. So the reason I read that to you because the very first verse in the next chapter, see, G was led into the, the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. But how many of y'all know he was ready for the assignment? How many of y'all know he had the power on him right now? See, because the devil is a, decept, a deceiver. He'll lie and he'll play all kind of mind games with you. And the first thing he tried to do is try to trick Jesus with something that Jesus already knew. Why? Because he knew the word. If thou be the son of God, turn these bricks into stones. Jesus turned these stones into bread. Jesus said, hold up, man. I quoted that through Moses all the way in Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, around the third verse. I said it way back there in the law that man don't live by bread alone. What are you trying to do? You so outdated. But if you don't know, he'll trick you. What sustained Jesus? What kept him? It was the word. And so now this leads me to my lesson on tonight, which I'm not going to be before y'all on. Titus, the second chapter. And just to give a little brief synopsis of Titus' life. Paul wrote that letter to Titus, you know, for his companion. And the reason he wrote it to him before his companion because they were going to crit uh, critique. And in the city of critique, in critique, they was infamous for sin and corruption. And God sent Titus over there to restore the church because they had so many ungodly rulers and God wanted to replace the ungodly rulers with some godly men. So I thank God for the word on tonight. But we got to just stay connected to the supernatural on tonight. See this revival we're getting ready to have? We got to get excited about it, y'all. Because this is when the word outcast, they become like us. We give an opportunity and space for them to come in our house for those three nights to be set free and to be delivered. And guess what, y'all? This is not about us. It's about what God want to do through us. But guess what, y'all? It's a team effort. 
everybody get to play a part. And guess what? Nobody going to achieve a bigger blessing than the other one. Because when we work at a, as a team, we all going to receive a righteous reward. But we have to come together. So I'm trying my best to get some of my people over y'all. I got some daughters that I need a miracle for. Invite them. I'm inviting them. You see, my invite, it goes deeper than invite. Daddy, I'm coming, and then they'll never show up. I just might throw a dinner and invite them to the house. Because wherever food at, they're going to show up. They coming. Daddy got something for you all. And when they get there, they might think we got a whole layout meal. And I got one of the best meals y'all can't turn down when they get there. Hot dogs and chili. Come on, and they call about five dollars. Everybody can eat. And then it's like a buffet. You can eat many hot dogs as you want. But God is a good God. And so here in Titus, the second chapter, it reads, But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. Come on. He's not just saying, I just want you to speak. He said, but no, what I want you to speak, I want you to speak sound doctrine. I want you to speak the uncompromising word that it would not only change the heart and the mindset of the people, but that they'll know that you're in love with them. He said that the aged men, now he's talking about, when he said the aged men, he's talking about elder men are men of maturity, people that are mature, that is skillful in the word. He said that the aged men be sober. Come on, we cannot come before God any kind of way. Being sober means y'all, we in our right mind. We alert. We focusing on what God wants. It's time for the church to get focused. But the only way we're going to get focused, y'all, we got to be sober. You know, and y'all don't have to tell me this. I already know because I'm the pastor. If it happened to me, I know it's happening to y'all. Because sometimes when y'all come to church, y'all be the just came out of praise. Y'all be excited about the word of God. And the enemy will put a thought in your mind while I pass up there preaching. And your body will be sitting in this room, but your mind is way over there by Tango Mall somewhere. He's a stealer of the word, y'all. He want to block you from receiving what God has for you. So Titus addressed this letter to the aged men and to the mature women. He didn't leave nobody out. He was speaking to the young. Watch. And he said that the aged men be sober, great, temperate, sound in faith, in charity and patience. Now, don't that sound like the fruit of the spirit there? So you got to operate in the fruit of the spirit in order to receive this manifold wisdom that God is trying to relate to you. And look what he said. And the aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becoming holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of what? See, we are the examples for the younger generation, the aged men and the aged women. We are their examples. Now, y'all know when our parents were living, and when we come to church, they call it the morning bench. But look like every seat in the church was the morning bench, because wherever you was at, Sit down, boy. And they didn't play all that talking and laughing and all that. When you came with them to church, you was under authority for however long church lasted. But now we come in church, everybody. Pastor Brittany texting, taking pictures of the pretty girls in the church. Now I can't say nothing. Because the Bible says, as a man purpose in his heart, so is he. We cannot force this on nobody, y'all. We just have to minister it to them and pray that they get it. But I got good news for us tonight. We're getting ready to walk into this seven month. Start desiring what you want from God tonight. See, don't wait till the, start doing it tonight. See, Lord, this one's gonna be different. See, in the midst of inflation, we're headed for recession. But how many of y'all know that's not going to apply to us? If you're trusting in God, that's not going to apply to us. People say, Pastor, I can't get another $10 worth of gas. Well, that's what you choose to get. Because you don't let fear slip in. Slip in, but get what? I'm going to do what I've been doing. I'm feeling up because I don't know when I'm going to have to take off. Y'all don't like it, but I'm telling you, you better be ready. you sitting there playing, trying to hold them $2. You better go because tomorrow, it might be a whole different day. But here Titus, he's trying to explain to the church because he's trying to get this ungodliness out of God's house and replace it with some godly people. And this is what he said. 
that they may teach the young women to be so one. Who responsibility that is? It is the aged women to teach the young women how to be sober. Now the Lord didn't say get in their business. Because guess what? You want to get them to the house. Now I'm finna mess up some of y'all theology right now because when you get them to the house, them young girls that went and dressed away down past their knees, their knees and ankles like you got on. Come on, pull that down. Girl, whosoever will, let him come. We run people from the church. See, because you got that big old long dress on with them big old long cane cane slips and all that. Them girls ain't about to do that. Huh? Y'all playing. Them girls ain't about to do that. Leave it that alone. Get to the house. God said one plant, another one water, but God give the increase. If y'all just get them to the house, let God deal with them. He can handle them more better than us. You know, I tell my little girl, Girl, you ain't leaving out the house with that. They get smart on them. Okay, daddy, they go get a bag, put what they gonna wear when they get in the street in the bag and they leave out the house and you still standing to my, I told her she wasn't gonna wear that. And the Lord just walk you down the street where she on and you still. Come on, y'all, leave it alone. We start have to be more concerned about their soul than about their dress code. See, we messing up. Let's get away from that dress code. God gonna deal with that. Cause remember when you thought you was all that. Y'all brought Daisy Dukes and leave that back finna go somewhere else. Y'all brought that in. Them children ain't know nothing about no Daisy Dukes. Y'all come here with them Dukes on. And then now y'all wanna punish them and ridicule them. And you the founder of it. Pastor, you messing up. Okay, I'm gonna go back. That they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. To be discreet, chaste, keep us at home. See, I told y'all, charity starts at home, then it is shared abroad. Now see, if you ain't living right at home, and you come to church and try to act like you all that, them children gonna tell on you. But you don't have to pretend when you're who you are. And if you yourself, you can be yourself anywhere you go. I looked in, Paul told Timothy, to study to show yourself approval unto God. I learned from that statement that everything I do has to be approved in the eyesight of God. Because man will never receive you. I don't care what you do. We done been there too many times. And so it said to love your own husband, that the word of God be not blasphemy. Young men likewise exalt to be sober mind. In other words, all that saying it is urging us to be in self-control. You got to maintain self-control. Stop letting people push your button. See, that's how people try to get next to you because they know where your button at. And then so you done told them what a button at, so when they push it and you go off, you only yourself to blame. Hide your button. Don't tell them where it's at. But keep a sober mind. Be clear about the things of God. And watch the favor rest upon us. I got a word for the church, but I'm asking the Lord to just put it in the full content. And it's going to bless everybody in the house. Because when you work the principle, God has to respond to the word. If God tell you to do something and you do it, he got to respond to what you just did through an act of obedience. He said, in all things, show thyself a pattern of good works and doctrine showing uncorruptedness, gravity, gravity, and sincerity. Sound speech. Be clear when you speak. Stop letting people have to guess what you're talking about. Just be honest with them. If you don't like them, tell them that. Don't go tell 10 other people you don't like them because guess what? They're going to go tell them. See, we just have to be honest about who we are and what we come to do. You know? Stop playing games because it's, everything is naked and open before the Lord. And I keep telling y'all, that's why so many people are receiving no dollar rewards because that's what you're giving God. And God said, when you step out on faith, you're going to see the miracle manifest. Well, I just got to be honest with you. I'm budgeting. <laughs> well, so you put God on the budget? And he the one gave you what you got? Come on, faith is not foolishness. The reason why we have to budget it with God because we're trying to keep up with other people. 
child where you got that dress from. It ain't time to afford that dress. Just wait on your season. I want to ask a question before I get back into the meat of the word. I'm not going to be with y'all long before this question. You will not be able to tell a Walmart dress from Neiman Market. Not only will you know the dress or the suit I got on come from Walmart, you see me go in there and get it. Because I could have told you I got it from anywhere. Now, some of y'all look so good in your cheap apparel than you do in your most expensive apparel. Pastor, where you are? I'm a counselor, so I always try to counsel people in the right way. Please don't go by them pay their shoes and try to do no dancing and stuff in them. They are not designed for that. They are just to get you by till you can get the real deal. Stop. See, you put yourself in home way. Would you go in there trying to cut a step? But you know that heel is not going to make it. But when you get them J. Renee's, you can do what you want to do. Come on. We got the crawl before we get there. I'm trying to show you. God, Titus get all these ungodly people out of the church because they're doing everything but the right thing. Come on, before there was a polo shirt, we were in ballons. And so all they did was took the ballon shirts and put a man with a horse and a stick on it. And now they charge me $95 for a ballon shirt when I could go to Walmart and get six of them shirts for $35. But because we want to keep up with the Joneses, we couldn't go on show. Then when it comes time to receive our blessing, we can't even give the blessing because we done gave it to somewhere else. But I said, Lord, reverse it, oh God. Let us be honest and wholehearted before you. See, when you start doing the right thing before God, God promises is upon us, y'all. His promises with the church. He's going to bless us, y'all. And what I love about God, he said, I will cause men to give it to y'all bosom. I'll make a stranger come give you something. But see, but you got to do what is right before God. And so here Titus. Titus was dealing with some people that were walking in sin and walking in corruption like you wouldn't even believe. But he went to teach order in the church because Titus was a missionary. He wanted to restore God's house by teaching them lawful and righteous principles. Just like us. God is my witness, and I stand before the host of heaven. I don't lie. Whenever I get money, I put God ties on the side. Because if you play with them ties, you ain't going to make it to Sunday. You ain't going to make it. You can sit there and play. But I, 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 I'm going to put it back. And 20 years later, you still ain't put back what you walked away with the first time. And guess what it do? He bring you further and further out there. And so if Uncle Sam won't interest, you don't think God won't interest? Read the book of Leviticus. When you refuse to give God his money, when you beg that next Sunday, you got to add 5% to it. Look in the book of Leviticus. That's the laws. But that's how God do stuff. But here tithe is equipping us to walk in the favor and the glory of God. Every day, y'all, say a little prayer. All throughout the day, put a word in your mouth. It don't cost you nothing to thank God. When you can move your fingers and your legs, it don't cost nothing to give God things. And y'all, we in a season right now, which is a fruitful season, and all we have to do is tell the Lord how much we appreciate what he's doing. See, when you bless somebody, guess what? You ain't got to worry about that person because they're going to be honest to you. They're going to be righteous to you because they know when they need a blessing where they can come. But the, my favorite, y'all know I say it on Sunday. Well, a man robbed God. It wasn't until I stopped robbing God that the blessing started flowing. Because if it belonged to God, that means it don't belong to me. Amen. Pastor, you there? Verse 8, sound speech that cannot be condemned. Listen at this. That he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. That's how you want to live. Well, nobody can say nothing bad about you. And they're going to lie on you anyway. I don't care how good you are. They're going to lie on you. But you'll know it's not the truth. He said, exalt servants to be obedient unto their own master. We got to teach people how to be obedient in law to their own master. You know what I love about God? God didn't tell me to be lords over y'all. 
He told me to pastor y'all and teach y'all the word of truth. I'm not Lord over God in there. That's why. Because for number one, if you know the real truth, y'all don't belong to pastor. Y'all belong to God. And so I'm going to take with God and try to make it mine. I can't do that. You know, you got to be persuaded in your own mind. And the only thing that God gave all us the same, he gave every last one of us in this room the same. And he didn't differ from giving it to us. He gave all us a choice. You get to choose whether you want to do right or you want to do wrong. It's simply, it is up to us. But I saw him favoring us, y'all. I saw him blessing us. I, I, I saw the last becoming the first, y'all. I saw a reverse taking place in this house. I saw the glory of God. I saw them angels in this sanctuary. And they were working miracles. God said one angel came out of the heights of glory and slew 180,000 men in one day. He said one can do what? A thousand, he said, but two. Come on, y'all. That's how he sent the disciples out. He sent them out together. I encourage y'all all the time, get a prayer partner, not a gossip partner. Get a prayer partner that when y'all lock up together in prayer, y'all know heaven is listening. See? You don't want to have to get all this stuff out of your way to get the prayer through. And when you leave your time, y'all can talk about whatever y'all want to talk about. But when it comes time to give you praise and glory and honor to God, you cut everything off. Say, Lord, it's me and you. Pastor, help us tonight. That's how Hezekiah was able to get his miracle. He didn't have nobody else to talk to, so he turned to the wall. Come, sometimes just turn to the wall. And quit telling everybody your business. You're wondering why you're receiving so much trouble and pride. You're telling too many people your business. And then when you hear your business again, you're mad. The first person get mad, what is you? God said, don't let your left hand know what your right hand doing. You know, and then y'all think y'all be in play mode. And they can't wait to leave to go tell all your business. Yeah. Cash, he ran in behind that man. <laughs> well, you told him. <laughs> Ain't past the fine. You better watch it. Yeah. Y'all better watch it. Yeah. Pastor hear everything. Y'all better watch it. Just thought I put a little fire on her feet tonight. She better, she better hold on. <laughs> Pastor, show look good. This Sunday didn't he go? I'm there. Not prolonging, but showing all good fidelity. That they may adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior, in all things. Can you gravitate to verse 11? For the grace of God that bringeth salvation had appeared to some men. You know that Bible says to all men. The grace, here we all, has appeared unto all of us. And that's the kind of God. Teach us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Now, that's what the three expect of how we shall live. Soberly mean I'm in my right mind. Righteously mean I'm going to do the things what? That is right. And that's what I'm just talking about. And godliness, I'm, I got a heart just like God got. See, I'm not afraid of what man can do to me. But I entrust God because that's my source. And when you rely on your soul, guess what? He'll come through all the time. He said, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearance of the great God and of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us. No man on earth was worthy. Buddha, Confucius, Muhammad, nobody could not fulfill the assignment. God had to put himself in the earth through a fleshly man and go all the way to Calvary Cross to redeem us from sin. Because over there in Hebrews 9, I think in 31, it said, without the shedding of blood, there remained no remission of sin. If Jesus would not have died, we would not be here tonight. But because the blood cleansed, because the blood make us white as snow, because back in Old Testament time, they had to take the blood and mark the doorpost. Come on. Y'all know that's where we're at right now. We have taken the blood and we have marked our heart with it. And God has sealed us to the day of redemption. We belong to him tonight. Favor's on us. And I thank the Lord for his favor on tonight. But most of all, I thank him for you all. I ask a simple analogy. 
I say when a football team get together, they form a huddle. Why are they form in a huddle? To receive the instructions on what the next move is going to be. Zion, we got to form a huddle. We got to decide what the next move going to be. And see, if he have made our enemy our footstool, then we ought to not have no more enemies. Now, come on, we're going to dislike what we do all the time because it's a part of human nature. But you ought to not still be holding grudges in your heart that didn't happen 25 and 30 years from now. Come on, them the ones we want to return back to the house because, because you never wear it in your faith. That means you ain't never stopped praying for them. So when they come, it ought to be a delightful thing to see them when they come. Not holding grudges. Come on, if you forgive, you ought to forget it. Not that it's going to leave your memory. Because some things just pop up, don't they? You can think of stuff people done you years and years ago. Mm-hmm, I do too. The Bible says, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us. Say he redeemed us. From all iniquity, y'all. Listen at this. And purified unto himself a peculiar people. What does 2 Peter 2 and 9 say? That we are peculiar people. We are raw priesthood to show forth the praises of who him. Come on, that God. Uh-huh. Come on, y'all. First, it say we are chosen generation. We've been chosen. We are in the hand of God. Can no man pluck you out of God's hand? You the only one can pluck yourself out of God's hand by walking and sowing bad seeds. But if you do what is right, you receive the blessing. You see, purify unto him a peculiar people, zealous of good work. These things speak and exalt and rebuke with all authority that no man. Come on, y'all. The Bible said, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever man sow, that's what he's going to reap. If you sow this cause, you're going to reap this cause. But if you sow truthfulness and holiness and godliness, that's what have to come back. To you. Now I'm excited about what God is getting ready to do. But I want all of us to get excited. Now I told y'all, and I and word repeat again, because this is also by charge. I say from Friday to 12 or 1 to 1 o'clock, what are we gonna do? Amen. That one hour, you will get everything you need from God if you do it the right way. You don't have to go sign along, get one of them big loud mouth speakers and say, I'm fasting. You don't have to tell nobody. Make it personal between you and God. We praying for our revival. What? That the power and the spirit of God going to move in the house. That people going to get saved, delivered, and set free. And that healing going to manifest. What we fasting for? What we want to take place in our house. Because the Bible described that some demons only come out through fasting and praying. So in that one hour. I'm looking for a supernatural manifestation to take place. I'm looking for the glory of the Lord. I ain't eating nothing. I ain't drinking nothing for that whole one. I ain't eating nothing, drinking nothing. Well, bad, I got to take my medicine. Well, you ought to take it before 12 o'clock. Let's stop making excuses to keep from doing what God wants us to do. But in sackcloth and ashes, let's come together and lift our hands and say, God, I thank you for what you're about to release in this house. Thank you for rest, restoration. That word restoration means abundance, y'all. He's not going to just give it back to you like you got it. He said what the enemy stole from you, he got to walk it back to you seven times. He got to give it back to you seven times more than what he walked away from. And I told y'all for seven years straight, God said he's going to bless us. See, y'all forget. I ain't forgot. I'm standing on that. See, God, you said we're under a seven-year blessing. And I'm waiting on my blessing to come. God is good. If we're grateful, he'll continue to bless us. If y'all can listen to Pastor tonight, anything that is unrighteous, walk away from it. Don't let thoughts bombard your mind. Stop letting your thought life dictate to you. Because y'all, can I tell y'all, listen, I'm through y'all. I'm honest, y'all. The enemy be trying to torment us in our mind. See, he's trying to make you think that you're the problem when you ain't got nothing. Half of the time, you don't even know what's going on until it happened. But he tried to make you feel the lesser. Why? He do the same thing to the pastor. But I got a word for him. I'm just like Jesus in that old chapter of the book of Matthew. Get behind me, Satan. 
Huh? And so the devil, if he thought he could kill Jesus, he would have killed him. He said, look, you got all power. You're, you're the greatness of everything. Jump off of this mountain. Your angel's going to give you charge over you. I don't advise you to do that. He's a liar, y'all. And his nature can't change. Guess what? Help me, Pastor. He's reprobate. If you don't know no more reprobated person, know that Lucifer, Satan, the devil, he is reprobate. He could never be changed. He could never get back into the family of the kingdom of God. Power, I don't know nobody that reprobate. No, you used to didn't know nobody. You know one person right now that's reprobated. And that's the devil. Because when he could have served God, he chose to deceive people to go against God. Is there any questions on tonight? Well, if there are no questions on tonight, I thank y'all for coming out tonight, being partakers of what the Lord has released in the house. I thank you for divine favor. We're getting ready to take up our offering on tonight. Amen? And if anyone needs prayer, you can come to the front of the church. We can pray, or you can stand right where you're at and just lift your hands. Because the centurion soldier, he didn't even want Jesus to come to his house. He said, Lord, if you could just send the word. Sometimes the word will get there quicker than you will get there. And so I'm just sending a word right now to our house and asking the Lord to bless us and favor us and empower us, amen, for that supernatural miracle. I'm one of the pastors that pray for checks to show up in the mail. I pray that tomorrow when the bird fly, I'm talking about the mail, man, that there'll be an unexpected miracle right there. And everybody in the neighborhood already think I'm kind of thrown off a little bit. But when I get that mail, sometimes I say, glory! They say, What's wrong with name? I said, if you knew it was in you, you'll be hollering glory too. But God is good. Amen. Deacon's still going to prove our offering on tonight. Like I said, the only announcement that we are really getting ready for tomorrow is the last day in this month. Yes, so Friday is July the 1st, y'all. Yes, I'm praying that a blessing will come our way like never before, y'all. This seven months, start decreeing and start asking God for what you want. Yes, and God said he's going to show up mighty. Yes, and so everything is not to be told. There's a time and a season for everything. It's under the sun. So if the Lord done bless you with a whole lot of money, please don't go tell everybody you got a whole lot of money. Because you're going to become one of the most aggravated person that ever lived. You're going to see people show up at your house you thought were dead 10 years ago. Let the Lord lead you. Let the Lord lead and guide you. You sign to everybody, I got it. And then when they come, don't let the devil make you lie. Because no, I mean no. I don't care how you look at it. It can't change. No, that 